I was once a camper myself. But it wasn't anything like this. Cheap creep. What's going on? This episode of Jeep Creep, keeping it popping. Um, we are going to continue working on the wood paneling. So on those sides, it's hard to see in the last video, I'm just running rivets. And the rivets are running into uh, the steel framing rail. Now, um, since this is gonna be a hard side and this needs to be strong on the freeway, what we're gonna do is um, take and reinforce it by running two by fours um, across the, uh, the wood. So what I'm gonna do here, on that steel rail that goes all the way up and down. Well, first of all, we're gonna reuse this guy. Um, that is what held the uh, the metal actuating arms. I'm just gonna run a two by four in this instead. And how I'm going to mount this without putting holes through the exterior is I'm gonna use something similar to a rivet. Uh, if you're not familiar with how a rivet works, uh, a rivet has a pin and a collar, and um, you drill out the whole size of the pin, and then the top, the very top right here, this, expands out and becomes like its own like lock nut, basically, on the opposite side. Now, so if you know how that works, they have something even cooler, which is a, uh, as soon as I pull it out of my pocket these guys all right this is basically the same thing except for i don't know if you can see in there yep there we go it's threaded and it's threaded to any size um uh bolt that you want pretty much um as you can see i have a kit of these and uh they come in all all kind of shapes and sizes there and then instead of using a rivet gun you're using this little guy. I'm not sure what they call these, but uh, right there you can see the depth gauge. You can set the depth of what you're penetrating. And then you run your, I'm trying to do this all with one hand here. And then, whoop, let's get this in the thing. You change your bit to the uh, right size threading. Hopefully I got the right one on there. I don't, but that's okay. And uh, you just pop this part in the hole. And uh, when you crunch it, what it does is it shrinks this part down to here. I should put it where you can see my fingers. The top part down to here, pinching it, making it like a lock nut, just like a rivet. Uh, and leaving you a nice threaded um, thing to screw into. So you can run your bolts right into it. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, essentially the same thing. So we're gonna be using these through the metal railing and also on this metal plate that I said our two by four is gonna go into. There's a couple of the old bolts right there I need to cut out and drill out. Um, and it will attach, the two by four will attach on the back of this plate using these rivets, these threaded rivets and uh, also several down the frame so it stays together on the freeway. So here we go. Screw it that way. There. That's what this handle's for. Okay. Let's see. Is it tight? Oh, that's, that's pretty dang good and tight. That, that worked nice. Cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pop ourselves a rivet on the other side. Actually, on this side, I'm just going to use a traditional rivet because... I got these for the heavy board 
and uh, I don't want to waste them because these bolts are not cheap. Um, I might put one right here with like an L bracket to, uh, to reinforce my sides. I don't know yet. So let's get a, a normal rivet now. custom cut it multiple times but I'm kind of thinking I'm just gonna cut it to right here because it's easier to run squares instead of triangles and this little weak piece right here and then I'll put one additional piece right here and fill that in real nice so I want to make sure that this is good and reinforced I don't want this weak right now this corner is only hanging on by these corner caps because um, they rely on the inside skeletal with like a little cheap piece of uh, angle iron um, on the <laughs> really thin pieces of wood that they use. They, didn't, they don't have any real framing connecting it. Um, the closest would be at the top of this metal to the top of this metal and that was it. So I'm going to do something similar to that um, with a piece of metal here but I'm also gonna have a two by four too to reinforce this thing. And that's where this comes into play. Um, I got some bolts that'll go into here and I'll drill the wood out and um, my two by fours will be securely mounted to this. And then um, the two by fours, I think I might do an angle board or something. Once this is in, I don't know, I gotta figure that all out. The only reason why I'm doing this right now is to get it ready uh, for pre-tar placement. One thing I should have done that I didn't do is cut out these bolts on the bottom. So in this one, before I put it in, I'm going to do that. It's going to save me a headache later. Two open three holes, I don't know if you can see that, because um, the metal was becoming one with age, rusting together. All right, uh, we're gonna run our veneer to the end of this, and then it's already got this little wood ledge, so we do that. It's the same as the others, nine. And it is precisely cuts to use a snap string a chalk snap string and you'll get a perfect line every time you can use lasers and all that good stuff to it you know, it doesn't matter also if you're trying to do a good job don't do what I'm doing again and use a circular saw. Uh, if you can, use a table saw. Table saws are way more accurate. But here's a, here, I'll, I'll illustrate this. I don't have the best blade in there, right? So uh, you see all that chip, 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 chip. Now look at the other side. Ooh, smooth. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So that proves my point. Chippy side we don't care about because that's going face down in some tar. Sure, we'll 
right with this thing. Fits like a glove. You know what this stuff reminds me of? For all you Trekkie fans out there. You remember that episode of Star Trek where uh, Tasha Yar gets sucked in by that tar pit monster? That's kind of like this stuff. So, uh, wear them gloves. Or even better, um, do you remember that Tales from the Crypt movie where that uh, floating tar pile monster goes after those like kids that were uh, uh, swimming? They swam to a platform and they got stuck? Yeah. Everybody knows if you're the tar. Except for when it comes in and you want to waterproof something real good. Stuff ain't going nowhere. Let's turn around the, that bolt so I don't lose it. This stuff, you definitely want to keep at room temperature. I let it set in my car the first time, and uh, it just makes it harder to apply. It'll work, but uh, why break your wrist trying to get this stuff on, right? It's easier to get it when it's nice and soft. I like letting you sit, your butter sit out for a little bit, you know? Should have plugged that hole. That's a big hole. Will this fit? Kinda. That's not bad for a slap it on while your hands are all tarred up fix. And then I just put an extra heap in the good stuff right over that hole. Just like baking a cake, you make mistakes and fill it with frosting. At least that's what I used to do. So what happens? You get more frosting on a piece of cake. Who does not like that? got this whole job, well not the whole job, I got, well I actually got a lot more to go. I have to toot my own horn, way too premature, because I got to tar all the center. That may or may not take a lot of tar, I don't know. But I got three sides done, with the one can and I got a little bit left. Stuff's like eight or nine bucks. Pretty cheap. So it's not terrible on price or anything like that. Keep it off of this nice piece of wood. This plug gave me a bracelet.
Something else I had to take and do was get a uh, ratchet strap to hold it because uh, these old corn caps, they're all brittle and they're all breaking. They don't last forever, they're just plastic. So uh, that actually holds its corner because there's a slit down the middle of this and with a wide gash where these two pieces of metal, they don't even touch. So uh, it's a good thing I got a little bit of tar in there to kind of help stuff from getting in there heavy rain and stuff but we're, in the, we're getting in winter here it's starting to snow again so uh yeah we'll wait for a warmer day to get back on this so as you can see i got the uh the last uh, wall panel put on for the four wall panels okay it's all buttoned down i took and i cut a two by four and uh slotted it out to fit that and then i'm gonna put uh, a couple screws in there a couple screws in there and uh i'm gonna start working on the top of the roof framing because uh, every day i'm putting this on and off uh, because it's been raining and all kinds of crappy weather uh having a project like this would be ideal to have a garage but eh, my garage isn't tall enough so wouldn't have made a difference anyway so here, what I'm, that's what I'm doing, and uh, I'll uh, film a few clips as I go. All right, uh, my creepers, what's going on? Working on the camper in uh, 70 mile an hour wind. Yeah, not smart, but hey, I'm bundled up, so let's try to make the best of this, all right? Because uh, it uh, was supposed to be 51 today at a high with the wind. You know, I really can't tell. Uh, but uh, here's what I got going today so far. All right, uh, I got this button down. Got my cross braces in flat and connecting. Call it quits for today because it's getting cold. All right, good morning. We survived yesterday's extreme winds of 70 mile an hour gusts. And, uh, uh, you know, as I was saying, we got these borders on. So now, today, what we're gonna do is um, cut out some veneer. I'm gonna have to use two pieces because veneer is four by eight, and uh, this is a 73 by 73. So, uh, you know, the four doesn't fit uh, in there. So, uh, we're gonna cut two long pieces to fit in there. All right, let's get started that man it's sunny out sunny is a good thing now sun is warm so our two dimensions are 73 by 36 and a half which is half a 73. I want to make sure I got the two good edges together because they're smoother. I got to tire this entire thing out. That's going to take a little bit of time, but hey, you don't have to wait. I'll just skip it along. All right, here comes the most rewarding part of this. Putting the wood on, covered all that tire. Oh, 
I told you not to walk away to wear these gloves. Cut out our center beam. Alright, I am no professional carpenter, so excuse my methods. I like to drill a hole kind of straight down, dial in my angle. So the uh, so the screw has a path that it follows that I want it to follow. Now there's things you could do. You could use like a pocket jig to get that down. Um, I just uh, let the screw push the wood. Look at that, counter sinks, boom. Good to go. Now, remember, the reason for that shallow angle is so I don't go through the roof. I only want it to go on this board. So um, that's why we're doing it this way. All right, I'm gonna sink that down a little bit too because I had a little bit of a rough edge. See that? rough edge. I'm just gonna sand that down just so it's level with this. All right I was doing some measurements and uh, it's hard to measure because uh, this is where the actuating metal arms used to go and uh, I'm not sure exactly how deep this is in the hole because it's in a and encased in the frame which is good. So instead of messing around I'm just gonna put them in and then cut them. The cool thing is, this is a 2x4, un uncut, and with just a little bit of convincing, it fits pretty tightly in the hole. So I'm going to use just my 2x4x8s, jam them down, figure out the height of the 4x8 sheet after it's down, like I'll have to measure off of this uh, riveted thing, because that's where my ply board's going to go, and uh, yeah, we're in business. Was it getting stuck on? assessment there's like a piece of two by four right there 
and uh, that's holding up the show, I think. Probably call it quits right there for today.